Y'all know I wrote a book, right? It's called Buy a Game and it's free. Click the link down there, you got it. DreAllDay.com What's up everybody? Dre Baldwin, DreAllDay.com Part 2. Y'all saw the Eastern Conference. If you didn't see that, then watch this one first and then watch the Eastern Conference. What I'm doing is going over all four first round series in the Western Conference, giving you my prediction, my thoughts on the teams, why I think, what I think is going to happen in these series. In the second round, I'll probably do series by series, a preview of each series. Conference finals, the same thing. Then the NBA finals, I like doing it one game at a time. Last year, that was really, it was fun. It was actually fun doing it after the game reviews during the finals last year. So I'm looking forward to that again this year. Hopefully, we get a good matchup like we had last year in the finals. Whomever that may be, I'm not ready to predict that yet. Let's just start round by round because I might get the first round wrong. Therefore, my finals can end up wrong. But first, before I even get into the teams who are in the playoffs, let me give a word or two on the teams who did not make the playoffs. And here we're in the Western Conference. It's the same for the East. Now we're in the West. First, the Phoenix Suns. So the Phoenix Suns went on a super duper tank job at the end of the season. They told, what's the guy's name? Uh, Eric Bledsoe, stop playing. You don't play in any more games because Eric Bledsoe was the best player on the team, which meant he gave him the best chance of winning his presence. So he said, you don't play no more so we can lose. <laughs> Tyson Chandler, you don't play anymore so we can lose. They were actually going to trade Tyson Chandler to a contender. Tyson Chandler said he didn't want to. He wanted to stay in Phoenix. Shout out to Tyson Chandler for wanting to stay around and help the rebuilding project. He already won a championship, so be good. So the Phoenix Suns and Devin Booker was on my fantasy team this year. Devin Booker, I just need Devin Booker to either become a, a 25 to 30 point per game guy or start doing something other than just scoring. Because if Devin Booker didn't score a whole bunch of points, he did a whole lot of nothing for my fantasy team. Not much rebounding, not much by way of assists or any type of defensive stats. He scores or he does nothing. So Devin Booker either score a whole bunch more, if that's what you're going to be, or start adding some other elements to your game, if you happen to be watching this. Next, the Los Angeles Lakers. Started off the season, kind of, they was like a 500 team. Like a month into the season, we were like, yo, the Lakers might make the playoffs. But then, reality set in. They ended up 26 and 56. Hopefully, I hope they get the number one pick. I hope they get Lonzo Ball. To play in L.A. so his dad can become whatever his dad's going to become. His dad's going to be the biggest star out of this whole thing. LeVar Ball going to be the biggest star out of the whole situation, trust me. If he goes, if Lonzo Ball goes to the Lakers. Now he goes to another team, it's still going to be interesting. But I want to see Ball go to the Lakers so we can just see how this whole thing plays out. But anyway, the Lakers, uh, what I got to say about the L.A. Lakers? And not much. I like their coach. I like Luke Walton, great coach. I like that they brought Magic Johnson back into the fold. I like that they trying to get the Bus brothers, the males in the family, out of the way because I don't think those guys really know what they're doing. But anyway, we ain't going to spend too much time talking about losing team. Minnesota Timberwolves. Carl Anthony Towns is a damn stud. Andrew Wiggins is kind of like Devin Booker, but he's like the, the athletic driving to the basket version of Devin Booker. Meaning he scores a bunch of points, but he does nothing by way of rebounding passing, or any other stat besides points. If Andrew Wiggins ain't scoring points, he's pretty much just in the way. Shooting the ball but missing. That's all he does. So Andrew Wiggins, if you're going to be that guy, go start scoring 25 to 30 points a game and not 22 points a game. You got to do more if that's what you're going to be. Otherwise, dude, you're one of the most athletic players in the world. Grab some fucking rebounds. Uh, other thing on Minnesota, they play, I think they play better as a team after Zach Levine got injured. Now, I'm not saying that I want to see people get injured, but Rubio was doing better with his assists and distributing. Then you had the two scores. You had Wiggins and you had Towns. Here's the thing with the Timberwolves when they had Levine. You can't have all those guys trying to eat on the same at the same time. Zach Levine needs the ball in his hands to be effective. He's not a guy who's like an off the ball. He ain't Klay Thompson. Zach Levine needs the ball so he can do his dribbling thing, attack the rim, try to cross you, shoot his pull-up jumpers. That's, how, that's the player that he is. Andrew Wiggins needs the ball. Carl Anthony Towns needs the ball. And Rubio is a point guard who likes to have the ball. You can't have four guys who all need the ball on the same team. That don't work. You can have three guys if one of the three is a point guard. So, for example, if you look at this team, back in the early 2000s, you had the Milwaukee Bucks had Sam Cassell, Glenn Robinson, and Ray Allen. It worked because Sam Cassell was the point guard. He could pass. He scored 20 a game. Glenn Robinson got his 20. Ray Allen got his 20. And they almost went to the NBA Finals. So they lost to Allen Iverson and the Sixers. That works when you got three guys who need the ball, but one of them is a point guard who can get the ball to those other guys. You can't have three guys who need the ball and none of them is a point guard. Levine, Wiggins, and Carl Anthony Towns. That's too many miles to feed. Rubio couldn't do his thing because Zach Levine was dribbling too damn much. When Zach Levine got injured, I think those three guys who were the cornerstones of their franchise all played better without Levine on the team. That should be telling them something. That Zach Levine, when he gets healthy again, and hopefully he gets healthy soon, he got to go. 
because Zach Levine out of the four of them, in my opinion, is the least important. Even though he may be better than Ricky Rubio, Ricky Rubio is the point guard. And Zach Levine as a shooting guard is way more expendable than Ricky Rubio is as a point guard. So I think Zach Levine has to go and the Timberwolves as a team. They still got to get better. I mean, because even when they had just those three guys, it ain't like they just started dominating the NBA. They ended the season losing six games in a row. So it ain't like they were so great. But if you want to see those guys flourish, those couple guys that they got, they got to get Zach Levine out the way because he ain't better than Wiggins and he ain't better than Carl Anthony Towns. And therefore, just by luck of the draw, he loses. All right, so that's it for Minnesota. Next, Sacramento Kings. Um, I don't even know what to say about Sacramento Kings. Besides, they traded Boogie Cousins, and what did they get? Not enough. I don't even want them to get a high draft pick because I don't want to see a great player go to the Sacramento Kings. Do you, do you want to see a great player go to the Sacramento Kings? I don't. So that's enough about the Kings. The Dallas Mavericks. Dallas Mavericks for a minute looked like they were going to like tank the whole season. Then they started winning a couple games. And then they start losing a bunch of games. They won two out of their last ten games. So they lost eight out of their last ten. They pretty much tanked the end of the season. I don't know what to say about the Mavericks. And I ain't got to because they make the playoffs. Next, the New Orleans Pelicans. All right, they got two of the top ten players in the world. They got Anthony Davis and they got Boogie Cousins on the same team. Problem is, the rest of their team is no good. The rest of that roster is no good. Drew Holiday is a solid player. That's why I call Drew Holiday. He's solid. They got it. They need a better point guard to play with those two guys. You need a better point guard. You need somebody who can kind of run the show with those two guys on the team. You would need someone who can like dominate and say, yo, you do this, you do this. I'm going to get y'all the ball, but you got to kind of direct people. Those two guys... Yeah, but Drew Holiday ain't going to work. Drew Holiday's your third best player. I don't see how... Well, this is what happens. When Drew Holiday's your, your second and third best player, you don't make the playoffs. And that's not a knock on Drew Holiday as a person. It's just, it's just the player that he is. It's just what he is. The rest of that roster, is nothing. They don't need to, there's nobody else on that roster who needs to be on the team. There are other people who are on the team. They don't need to be on the team. Pelicans got to make some moves. It might be getting rid of Boogie Cousins. I don't think... Just because you got Anthony Davis and Boogie Cousins on the same team mean that you're just going to be spectacular all of a sudden. I mean, look at Anthony Davis and look at Boogie Cousins up to this point in their careers before they was on the same team. Neither of them did whole, a whole lot of winning. Anthony Davis, I believe, is the only one with a playoff appearance. And he got swept in four games and that one time he made the playoff. Not to say he's not a good player, but listen, neither one of them have done any winning. Now, you want to say is the team around them? Or whatever. They haven't done any winning. That's just a fact. Now, why that fact exists... There are many, many positions and debates that can be had about that. But I don't think just having those two guys means you're going to be anything. Because even while they were on the same team, it's not like they just started winning and they just came up short because they were already too deep in the hole. They were losing when both of those guys was playing. They was both putting up great stats. I look at the stats. Like Anthony Davis, I had 29 and 14. Boogie had 32 and 10. I'm like, all right, these guys are putting up great stats. This is great for a video game, but they still not winning any damn games. So... I'm not, I'm not that excited about those two guys being on the same team because still somebody got to get them the damn ball and you got to have good players around them. It can't just be a couple really great guys and then a bunch of guys who can't do anything to compliment them. So, And on top of that, those two guys, I can't call either one of them really great as far as winning because they ain't done no winning. They got great stats, but stats and winning is two different things. And both of those guys have only mastered half of that equation. Next, Denver Nuggets. Great team coming on through the end of the season. They played great through like the, the third quarter of the season. The fourth quarter of the season, they weren't too great. That loss that they took to the Oklahoma City Thunder when Russ hit that three-pointer at the buzzer was just, that's the type of, type of stuff that Russ was doing this year. So it was it was crazy. That picture when they showed the whole crowd, Russ is celebrating, they showed the Denver crowd just looking devastated because he made that shot. That was a hell of a picture. But Russ, Russ is Russ. He had a great year. We'll talk about him in a moment. The Nuggets, uh, they found the Joker, Jokic, killing. He's going to be great next year. Maybe even make the All-Star if he can play like that all season. We'll see if he can play like that for a whole season. Denver has a lot of young pieces. Uh, their point guard, who they drafted not too long ago, Moutier, he was getting DNP CDs. He wasn't even getting in the game at a point during the season. Is he going to end up being a blown draft pick, a bust? I mean, if you're drafting in the top 10, you you can possibly become a bust. Now, it's too soon to say he's a bust, but we'll see what happens with him. But Jameer Nelson basically took that point guard job for the stretch of the season when Denver was doing good. Jameer Nelson was running the point. But that's it for the teams who didn't make the playoffs. Now let's talk about the teams who did. Western Conference, first round. Golden State Warriors against the Portland Trailblazers. 
I like this series for one reason, because I know that Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum are going to come to play against Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. That's what I like. That's what I like about this series. That those, I know those dudes will always come to play against those other guys. What I don't like about this series for Portland Trailblazers is that besides Steph Curry and Klay Thompson, there's still Draymond Green and Kevin Durant on the Golden State Warriors and the Portland Trailblazers and they got nobody for them. And this series should not last long. <laughs> I think if Damian Lillard catches absolute fire and CJ McCollum catches absolute fire, Portland can win two games in this series. If they both catch fire, they can win two games in this series. I think also, Warriors are a better team now than they were last time. I think they played Portland in the first round, was it last year or the year before that? They're a better team now because they got a guy named Kevin Durant. So if Steph Curry goes cold and Klay Thompson can't get open and Draymond's not really scoring a whole lot of points, um, you got a guy who's one of the top five players on the planet by the name of Kevin Durant. We didn't even get to him yet. I think the Warriors can sweep them. I think if the Warriors really decide that they want to come to play, and I know Damian Lillard said the Blazers in sixth thing. It was kind of like tongue-in-cheek because the, the media guy, the TV guy set him up with the question and Damian Lillard didn't pass it over. He decided that he was going to kind of go with it. He said Blazers in six and then he laughed. So the Warriors could decide to take that personal. They could decide not to. And I don't think... I don't think they got the personality to take that personal and really, really make it an issue as far as how they perform. I say Warriors in five, which makes that boring. If it goes six, then it makes it exciting. I think if Portland can win two games, it becomes an exciting series because Portland won two games. They're one game away from forcing a game seven. And if Golden State decides, listen, we're just going to kick this team's ass just because we can and they sweep them, that would be exciting to me. But a five-game series, which is what I think is going to happen, that's not exciting. So let's just get the series out of the way. Damian Lillard, just, just go off. CJ McCollum, just go off. Because if y'all don't, this series ain't going to be long. It ain't going to be interesting. I don't know if I'm going to watch it, like, even one game in the series. Next. Number two seed, San Antonio Spurs against the number seven, Memphis Grizzlies. These two teams played some knockdown, drag-out series. However, just looking at these two teams, there's one determining factor. The Memphis Grizzlies, I mean, Mark Gasol is a great player. He's an all-star level guy. Mike Conley is the highest paid player in the NBA, isn't he? He got the, like, the biggest contract yearly in history of the NBA or something like that. He got a big contract. Let's just put it like that. Neither of those guys is the kind of guy who, just because he's on the team, you could just say, all right, he's on the team. When he wants to, we're going to win. I can't say that about anybody on the Memphis Grizzlies roster. But I think that's what makes them who they are. Their team identity is that it's not about any one guy just being a spectacular dude. The problem is, on the San Antonio Spurs, they do have that dude. His name is Kawhi Leonard. He's averaged 26 points a game this year. As many people have said, the best two-way player in the game, which I don't even understand that concept. The whole sport of basketball is two ways. So if he's the best two-way player, that just means he's the best player, period. He's not the best two-way player, though. The best two-way player is a guy named LeBron James. And Kawhi Leonard ain't. No bum compared to LeBron James, but Kawhi Leonard ain't better than LeBron James. Let's not get it. Let's not get out of control. This whole two-way player thing makes no sense. The whole game is two ways. It ain't no offensive players in basketball and a defensive player. You got to play offense and defense if you're on the court. So I don't understand why people keep saying that two-way thing like that's a special category just for Kawhi Leonard. But anyway, Kawhi Leonard is pretty damn good. That's the point. And he's better than anybody on Memphis. The Spurs are better than the Memphis Grizzlies. And I say the Spurs win this series. Again, this is one that, again, comes down to what is this star player going to do? Is Kawhi Leonard ready to just say, you know what, fuck this. I'm going to dominate this team, and we're going we gonna to run, run these dudes out the gym. If Kawhi Leonard really, really did that, they can sweep the Grizzlies. Kawhi Leonard is not going to do that. I think if he, if he really does it, not really, really, but just really, one really, they'll win in five. I think the Spurs should win this series in five. Now, if the Spurs are playing around, and don't really come to play the way they should, then this series is going to go six. But the Spurs are going to win in six if it goes six. It's not going seven unless somebody gets injured. I say the Spurs win this in. I want to see the Spurs win it in five. If they don't really come to play, they win it in six. So let me make a prediction. I'm going to get off the fence. I say Spurs in five. Kawhi Leonard is really going to show up and play like a guy who should be the MVP. I'm not saying he's my MVP pick. I'm not making an MVP pick. But I'm saying he's one of the guys. The four guys you talked about, LeBron, Russ, Harden, and Kawhi. If he plays like a guy who really deserves to win MVP, he should put this team away in five. Yes, him. Not the Spurs, but him. Next series, Houston Rockets against the OKC Thunder. This is going to be one of two very 
very entertaining first round series, guaranteed entertaining first round series. And the next one we're going to get to in a moment in the Western Conference. Obviously, you got the two guys, two guys who many people have said, hey, possible MVP, Harden, possible MVP, Russ. I think Russ is going to end up winning the MVP just because of the numbers, the led the league in scoring, the whole triple double thing, the buzzer beater that he made against Denver late in the season. I think he just came on late doing spectacular things that's going to get people's attention. And that's the type of stuff that gets people's attention and wins votes. It's a show. He put on a show at the end of the season. And James Harden was putting up very, very solid stats, but it was no big, like spectacular, like, oh my God, look what James Harden did. He didn't have any nights like that. Russ had several nights like that during the last month of the season. And because of that, he's going to win MVP. He's going to win just because of that. But anyway, that's not what this is about. This is about who's going to win the first round series. And that's going to be James Harden and the Houston Rockets. The Rockets are a better team than OKC. There's no one on OKC who can do anything to beat you except Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is the only guy on that team who can do something to beat you when you're playing against that team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. They're not saying, I'm not saying that other players on the team are not good, but none of them can beat you. None of them is going to do anything to beat you. If Russ is having a bad game, then Russ is just going to have a bad game and they're going to lose. So it's not like if you think something like, let's say the Cavs, if LeBron James having a bad game, Kyrie Irving could go score third. Or Kevin Love can get you 25 and 15. And back in the day, Michael Jordan was having a bad game. Scottie Pippen can get you 25, 30 points a game. If Kobe was having a bad game, Shaq could score 40. If Shaq was having a bad game, Kobe would score 50. If Russell Westbrook have a bad game, OKC is getting run out of the gym. Russell Westbrook could have a great Russell Westbrook could have a great game and they get ran out of the gym. Because there's no one else on that team who can do anything to beat you. Not that they can't do anything to play. They can play, but they can't do anything to beat you. Therefore, OKC, I don't really think they can put up much of a fight in this series. I think, see, Houston's defense, I don't know if Houston's D is great enough. I think Pat Beverly is going to take it personal to try to shut Russ down. And depending on how successful he is at that, and my prediction is he won't be very successful. I think Russ is going to go off in this series, but they're still going to lose. I think Houston should win in five, but I'm going to predict that it goes six. I'm going to say it goes six just because Russell Westbrook knows that he's the main show right now in the league. He knows everybody's watching him. He knows people watch OKC games just to see what crazy stuff Russell Westbrook does stat-wise. And I think he, he plays knowing that he wants to live up to that. I think, he, I think that matters to him, Russell Westbrook. And in the midst of all that, trying to win. So I'm not saying he's a stats guy, just chasing stats. I think he wants to win. I think that matters to him. I think they win at least two games in this series just because of that in the mind of Russell Westbrook. But they don't have a chance to win the series because of the exact same reason. Russ dominates the ball so much for OKC that no one else in that team has enough confidence to do anything remotely close to enough to win a playoff game. Therefore, the series is not going to be too competitive, even though OKC may win two games, and that's it. Houston in six. Next series. This series, I think, is going to be a damn good series. The LA Clippers against the Utah Jazz. I think this is going to be a damn good series because you got a team like the Utah Jazz who has been in the playoffs, but not really in the playoffs. They weren't really, you weren't looking at the Jazz like, hey, they might win. But there was never a point in the last, the last couple of times they've been in the playoffs, you were like, hey, they might win this series. No. But I think they can win this series. If they had home court, I would pick them to win the series, but they don't have home court. Gordon Hayward has emerged as an all-star. He's an all-star. I won't go any further than calling him that. They have a solid team around Gordon Hayward. They got Rudy Gobert, who's played great this year. He'll probably win Defensive Player of the Year. Joe Johnson give you some give you some points off the bench. You got G Hill, George Hill, who's a great point guard, great solid point guard, gets you 18, maybe even 20 points in a game. Solid defense, all around play. You got your bigs. You got Favors down there. Utah has just a solid all-around team. Solid all-around team that they have. The LA Clippers, on the other hand, they got DeAndre Jordan, who is like the prototype big guy for where Rudy Gobert is going. Protect the paint, grab a whole bunch of rebounds, catch Al Ups and dunk. I mean, Gobert don't do as much Al Ups as DeAndre Jordan. That's only because Gobert ain't playing with Chris Paul, who's one of the best point guards of all time, statistically, and even subjectively. Chris Paul is going to play great. I don't know how many, I don't think people paid much attention to Chris Paul the last few years because we've had this point guard revolution. You had Derrick Rose was killing about five, six years ago. Then you had, uh, I don't know, his name point guards who've been going on. Now you got James Harden at point guard. You got Russell Westbrook now doing his thing as a point guard. There have been a whole lot of electrifying point guards just doing all this stuff. Steph Curry has had his run where he's been like the 
dominant point guard. You got a guy like even like a guy like Kemba Walker. You got Kyrie Irving doing his thing with all the dribbling and moving moves on people at point guard. People have quietly not been noticing Chris Paul. Here's what I would challenge you to do: go on YouTube. You're already on YouTube and look up a Chris Paul highlight video, for like a season-long highlights video. Chris Paul is very fucking good. <laughs> Chris Paul is very good. You want to talk about handle? Listen, Chris Paul got all the handle. You want to talk about efficient shooting? Chris Paul got efficient shooting. You want to talk about passing, setting up your teammates the way he wants to set them up? Chris Paul can do that. There's nothing Chris Paul can't do at the point guard position, and he can lock up on defense when he wants to. Chris Paul is very good. Let me just, that y'all didn't understand what I was saying there. Because Chris Paul is very good, I think, and we didn't even talk about Blake Griffin, who doesn't do the super athletic stuff he used to do, but Blake Griffin still gets you 20 to 25 points in the game. This is one of them series where it could go either way. I say this is a seven game series. This is gonna go seven. And when a series goes seven, it always comes down to one thing. Even when a series goes six, it comes down to one thing. This has always been my theory and I'm sticking with it. You gotta pick the best player on the floor. Who's the best player on the floor if you put the whole Clippers roster out there and the whole Jazz roster out there? And also, Austin Rivers has actually become a solid player on the LA Clippers this year. He is actually a solid player. I didn't know if he would become one, but he has definitely become a solid player, Austin Rivers. So shout out to the coach's son. Chris Paul is the best player in this series. Chris Paul is better than Gordon Hayward. He's better than Rudy Gobert. Now, if I had to pick a player for the next 10 years, I'm going to take Gobert because he's younger. But right now, for one game, Chris Paul is better than Rudy Gobert. If it was a game seven, who would you rather have? Chris Paul or Rudy Gobert? Or Gordon Hayward? I'd rather have Chris Paul. And because of that, the LA Clippers are going to win this series in seven games. They win in seven. That sets up a second round matchup for the Clippers against the Warriors. <laughs> That'll be fun. So those are my picks. So first round, Western Conference. I got the Warriors and what I say, Warriors in five. But I think they're going to come to play and kick the shit out of the Trailblazers, which I hope they do. I hope they sweep them, but I think five. San Antonio Spurs over the Grizzlies in five. I think if they really wanted to come and play, if Kawhi really wanted to come and play, they could sweep the Grizzlies, but I think it's going to take five. Might go six, depending on how the Spurs do. It's hard to predict the Spurs. I think they'll win, but it's hard to predict like if they really want to just annihilate a team. Houston is going to beat OKC in six. That one, I'm more, I'm very sure these these last two series that the Houston OKC series is going six, and I'm very very sure the Clippers Utah series is going seven. That's the only series in the first round on either side that I know for a fact is going seven. It's not a fact, but you know what I'm saying. Strong opinion that it's going seven. So those are my picks for the first round. If you got picks for the first round, you need to put them in the comments to this video before the games begin. Don't come in here after the games start talking about, oh, well, I think Houston's going to win in five because they blew OKC out. In the no, don't come after the game start. So make sure you get your comments in before any games begin, before you hear about any updates or injuries or any of that, and leave your comments down there if you're going to say it. Don't come in after the games begin with your little predictions. It's not a prediction then. Prediction means before. All right, if y'all didn't know that. Everybody. Work on your game. Enjoy the NBA playoffs. My name's Dre All Day, signing off.